from the city of brotherly love. This is Shark Bite Biz with David Strausser. You just arrived to the newest episode of Shark Bite Biz. I'm your rock star wannabe host, David Strausser. This is your place to grow a business during complete global chaos. Doing much better with the COVID recovery. Not like I was last week. In a much better place this week. First, so remember, you can download the Shark Bite Biz app exclusively on the Google Play Store. Just search Shark Bite Biz. Pretty simple. Download the app. You'll find every audio, every video, episode of this podcast, vodcast, whatever you want to call it, right there in the app. Plus, if you hit the menu button, you'll find the coffee store section where you can go buy our fabulous coffee, Dead House Coffee, right there in the app. Remember, use code SHARK. You'll save 20% off your order. Or if you don't want to download the app, head on over to deadhousecoffee.com. And again, use code SHARK. You'll save 20% off. We'll get the proceeds to continue building the biggest, best show we possibly can. Back to today's show. If you're like me when you're wholesaling, you're probably thinking of something else, okay? Something very different than real estate. Today's guest is an expert on wholesaling, but wholesaling with real estate and does millions of dollars worth of business annually. So who do we have today? None other than Mr. Brent Daniels. Brent Daniels is a multi-million dollar wholesaler in Phoenix, Arizona, and the creator of Talk to People, a simple, low-cost, and incredibly effective telephone marketing program, also known as TTP. It helps wholesalers do more bigger and more profitable deals by replacing traditional paid advertising like postcards, yellow letters, banded signs and PPC with being proactive and taking action every single day. Brent has personally coached over 1,000 wholesalers enrolled in the cold calling mastery training and helped tens of thousands of others who listen to him host the Wholesaling Inc. podcast, watch his YouTube channel, and attend his live events. A natural leader, Brent combines his passion for helping others with his high energy. Don't wait around for business attitude to help you crush your wholesaling goals as quickly and easily as possible. So, hey, without further delay, let's bring Brent right on in here. Business strategy. Brent, welcome to Shark Bite Biz. You, my friend. You just became shark bait. All right, David. I'm I'm excited to be shark bait here. Let's get this thing going. Let's bring up the energy. Let's bring up the enthusiasm. Let's talk about all whatever you want to talk about. Let's open this thing up. Let's do it. Okay. So, Mr. TTP, tradition on the show. Very first question is, okay, what is your experience? What is your background? What do you do? How'd you get where you're at? Basically, in a nutshell, tell us what makes Mr. TPP or TTP at Brett, what makes Brett Brett? Yeah, I find ugly houses and get big checks. That's what I do. Ugly houses, big checks. And then uh, I've been doing that since 2004. And so I go direct to, you know, I find ugly houses in, in the community here in Phoenix in the surrounding areas. And we have a quality conversation with the, with, with the property owner and we buy those properties. So it's similar, David, to like you, when you're trading in your car to the dealership and you know that you haven't cleaned it up and you haven't upgraded it and you haven't cleaned the, the you, you haven't put new tires or rims or whatever on. And you just want to just for speed and convenience, turn that car in and get the new car. That's what I do. But with real estate and it's called wholesaling real estate, we go and find these discounted properties and make them look beautiful and, uh, and resell them. How long on average does that whole process take you think? Well, it depends. There's two parts of it. All right. There's the part of finding the deal and you can sell that deal to an investor that's going to do the construction side, or you can take it down and fix it up yourself and sell it. And that typically takes 90 to 120 days, depending on the amount of rehab a property needs. Right, right. So right now we're in one of the hottest markets uh, for housing 
ever. How has that affected your business? Helped it, hurt it? Yeah, it's absolutely fantastic. It's supply and demand, and everybody thinks the only way that you can get houses is get a real estate agent, find it on the MLS. Well, we're just going direct to the property owners. We give them a call, or we go by the house, uh, or we text them, or mail them, or or they come into our world through our website, and and then we find these opportunities. And people are just like, hey, listen, give me this price, and it's yours. And typically, it's about 60%, 70% of what uh, the fixed-up value will be. Obviously, these properties need some love. And so we find these opportunities and buy them cash and, and uh, either give them to, uh, either sell them to our network of other investors that want to do the work or we uh, take them down ourselves. So you're trying to get kind of ahead of the curve before they get listed, real estate agents. You're, you're, you're trying to, so as soon as someone's starting to search in Google that they may be thinking of selling their house, that's when you're trying to reach somebody because you want them to go to you first instead of going to the real estate agent. Well, here, here's an important distinction here. Six to 10% of the real estate market is in distress at all times, all right? Whether we're talking about the physical condition, the physical distress of that property, it's just beat up, it's a hoarder house, it was burnt down, uh, there was a flood, there's mold, you know, some one of those situations, or there's a financial distress of the property owner, maybe they got over their skis too much with their expenses, or maybe they inherited a house that they can't really, you know, they really don't have the budget to fix up or to, uh, you know, move into and keep making the payments on, or the emotional distress where people are just going through a really tough time in their life, and they just don't want this property anymore because of whatever bad memories they might have in it. And so they want to get rid of it as soon as possible. So we're not talking about you and I that, you know, we buy a house with an agent, it's nice and it's moving ready and we do inspections and we get warranties on it and everything like that. No, we're talking about people that just want to sell their properties as is. They don't want to, you know, a trail of people going through these properties, going through their house, you know, making their dogs bark or going through all their trash or, you know, they have to fix it up and, and make it pristine before selling. No. They just want to sell it. They just want to turn it in, get the cash, get out of it, and move on with their life. So it's really different than, than the regular market um, because the regular market, people should list their properties with an agent. They're going to get the most that they can for that property. But if people want speed and convenience, uh, they take it at a discounted price. And that's where your wholesaler approach kind of comes into play, it seems like then. That's how we're going full circle. So you mentioned something there, maybe kind of giggle, uh, hoarders, because, uh, you know, they have the TV show with the hoarders, stuff like that. Is that a serious problem? You run into that often, you like someone inherits a house and it's like, oh yeah, my mom was a hoarder. And like, is it ever as bad as a TV shows bad or worse? I mean, we're talking, I, I mean, we've had properties where we've had to put 20 dumpsters like literally, David, not just the inside of the house filled to the cabinets of trash and like little paths that they kind of carve through, but the whole backyard. I mean, it's, it's, you know, you, you feel bad because they've just kind of gotten to a weird mental, um, you know, there's, there's, there's something going on there, right? There's a, you know, usually some kind of mental psychological disorder or something like that. My wife is. calls me a hoarder just because I collect like sports or music memorabilia. I'm like their guitar picks from Joe Perry. You know who Aerosmith is? It's a slippery slope. It's a slippery <laughs> slope. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There, there you go. So another thing that you do too is uh, you're the creator of Talk to People. Yeah. And what is Talk to People? Yeah, really. I mean, listen, it's a business philosophy. If you don't have a lot of money and you're starting out as an entrepreneur, the way that you build your business is by your voice and your skills and your ability to effectively communicate, right? I don't care what business you're in. You got to be proactive if you don't have a huge marketing budget. If you can't generate leads from people calling you. Well, what's your other option? You can wait for things to drop in your lap or be proactive and go out there and actually talk to people, right? You actually start those conversations. And so from a real estate investing side, 
you know, it gets really expensive for marketing, whether it be internet leads or direct mail or billboards or newspapers or whatever else, a pay-per-click, you know, all of these things cost a lot of money because there's a lot of competition because usually the spreads on these deals are about $40,000 each transaction, okay? And so in that, people will build in fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 worth of marketing per deal. Well, you can pick up the phone and, and get direct to these property owners a lot sooner for, you know, maybe $500 as opposed to, you know, $20,000. Cost to land a deal is about fifteen to twenty k, whereas if you do it through the phone, you're closer to fifteen hundred. It's all it's all market specific in San Diego, sure, right? In Phoenix, sure. San Diego, is that where you're at? In Miami, no, I'm in Phoenix, but in in these no, major Phoenix, markets, okay. the the Seattle, the Austin, the Miami, the uh, San Diego, anywhere in New York City, all of these. Uh, bigger markets where the price points are just keep swelling up because they just keep growing. Yeah, it's going to cost yep. you a lot more because there's more competition. But if you're in Birmingham, right. you know, Alabama or something like that, or or, or Guns Barrel, Texas, right? It's going to be less for marketing, <laughs> but you're still going to you're still going to net more per deal if you're being proactive. It doesn't cost a lot to get somebody's phone number, pick up the phone, and call them. Right? What about phone calling people versus email list. We've had a lot of discussion on this channel lately. A lot of experts are like email list. It's it's the way to go. Build your list. You know, it's the cheapest, most effective way. What's your opinion on email versus phone? Yeah, emails just hasn't. I mean, it's been tested for a long time in our industry. It just isn't working when you just cold email somebody. Uh, hey, I want to buy your house right? It's a lot. Of, it's, a, it's a big transaction. You know what I mean? A lot of times this is people, I mean, this is their biggest investment. So, you know, they want some more human interaction there. Um, I think that if somebody cracked the code on it, maybe there would be some potential there. But in our experience, going direct to them and having a conversation allows you to pre-qualify them and see if they're actually willing to do business with you as opposed to emailing them. They email back, how much will you give me? You email them back and then they disappear. Now they leverage what you just sent them to anybody else that reaches out to them, right? If I emailed you and you're like, yeah, give me 500,000 for my house or whatever. And I'm like, um, no, I could give you 450. And the next guy calls you and you're like, yeah, I got somebody at 450. If you can give me 460, you know, I'll, I'll consider it or whatever else. You want to build a relationship. When you were saying that, the first thing that was kind of running through my head was, you know, I do ERP. And right now, that's a big investment. We work small to mid-sized businesses. So we do have small deals that could be twenty, twenty-five thousand dollars $25,000. Most of our deals are going to be two fifty to 500000 And for these companies, it's usually... You know, let's just say they're a twenty to fifty million dollar company. Even if it's a, if it's a five hundred thousand dollar purchase, I mean, a fifty million dollar company doesn't spend five hundred thousand dollars on a piece of software every single day. You know what I mean? It's a once in an every couple of years experience. Now, we've been successful in digitally transforming that. But then, as I was kind of thinking through that in my my brain, comparing what we do versus what w you do with the purchase, is I think the big difference there is that we are B two B companies have learned how to digitally transform because of COVID, and you're still dealing with consumers, individuals that still want the warm and fuzzies in person. They want to shake a hand. They want to look you in the eye. And they want to make sure that they're not being screwed. Whereas B2B, you know, you're able to give those digital warm and fuzzies because, you know, your camera's on, you're smiling, and they're going to see if you're rolling your eyes when, oh, yeah, 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 we can, we can do that automation. You know what I mean? Big difference. These people are in distress. You know what I mean? They, 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 they bury their head in the sand and they really need somebody to hold their hand and get them out of this situation, whatever it is, you know what I mean? And so it's, 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 it's very uh, emotional 
And that's why a lot, when you see, you know, wholesaling is we source the opportunities. We go to the property owner, we generate this opportunity, we work with them, we move them to the point of conversion. Now we've got a signed contract and now we have to determine our exit strategy. Either we're going to assign this deal to another investor and get a fee, we're going to close on it and flip it, or we're gonna close on it and, and keep it in our portfolio, right? And so to get them to that point where they understand the whole process and understand how much they're gonna make and when they're gonna make it and how we can help them, everything pops up. I wanna leave all my stuff in the property. My tenant needs an extra 45 days after I get my money to live in the property to move somewhere else. You know, I'm going through pre-foreclosure. I owe property taxes. They're gonna foreclose on my house in like 15 days. Those things are time sensitive. And to do it digitally is just, it just hasn't really translated in our business. It hasn't translated. You, yeah, no, totally get it. You know, we had a, a lawyer on here and she was telling me about how, and she's in LA, how court cases now they're doing them, you know, online through Zoom and, and stuff like that. And it's kind of weird because you hear like real estate transactions, they haven't turned digital yet, but yet, I mean, we had Supreme Court you know, stuff going on through teleconference phone calls during COVID. So it's kind of, kind of crazy. Yeah. They have to, right? I mean, listen, if you have to go to court and the only option you have is you have to figure out somebody in your family that can turn on your computer and click a link for you. You know what I mean? If you don't know what that is, then you have to do that. But if they're like, if they give the option, they want to meet somebody knee to knee, face to face, belly to belly. Right, right, right. Now, you also do training as well, too, with the code calling. That's the cold calling mastery, I believe it's called. Teaching people how to effectively communicate with distressed property owners so they understand and can filter out what's the best option for them. Should they list it on the market? Should they take a cash offer? What should they do? Should they negotiate whatever is going on with whatever loan or lien that they have on the property that's really causing a lot of stress for them. Um, it's, it's really just kind of really filtering out what is the specific situation with this property owner and how best we can serve them. Now you've mentioned the word distressed a few times. So I've got to ask this question. You're in the real estate market. I've read a couple of people saying that, Hey, this is creating a real estate bubble with the, uh, amount that houses are being sold for right now just like we had back in 2007 2008 2009 you know once this covid rushes over that that bubble is going to pop you're going to find people that are upside down and it might take them another 10 15 20 years to get back to the value of what they just purchased that house at are you in a believer in that? Do you think that's not the case? What, what do you think the, the, the future is? Yeah, I mean, if you, if, you, if you really look into it, I think the experts will tell you it is a boom, not a bubble. Um, what you'll find is, David, that, you know, over the past decades, each decade, there was about 10 million houses built, right? And uh, I'm sorry, 20 million houses built uh, in each decade. When, to, when uh, the economic world melted in 2010 to 2020, there was only 8 million properties built. So you got a 12 million lack of, of supply there. So not only that, you have 30 million more people in this country. All right. So you've got 12 million less houses being built and you've got, uh, you've got 30 million more people. So one, it's a supply and demand thing. Two, interest rates are incredible. So the buying power is strong. And what you'll see is interest rates will go up. The price points um, will, will eventually flatten out. And people that were wanted to buy, you know, a, a bigger house are going to buy less of a house for the same price. Yeah, we need to get a house. And we kind of decided, you know, my landlord, it's a love-hate relationship because I don't blame him for wanting to cash in, you know, but when we rented this house, he had told us 2024, 2025 is when they'll have their ROI with what they spent. And that's when they would sell it. And, you know, after we lived here for about a year, we said, Hey, you know, when that happens, we want first dibs. We want to buy the house. No one expected COVID was going to happen. We moved here about a year and a half before COVID happened. And the, sure. no one predicted it, obviously. 
Um, and then, you know, the, the prices of real estate skyrocketing in the suburbs like they have. I'm outside of Philadelphia right now. And he was pretty much like, uh, yeah, we're, we're going to sell the house. I had to negotiate and he was tough. I mean, he was like, no, I want to sell now. You either buy the house now or you, you got to move. And I negotiated an extra year. Um, nice. And it cost me an extra 800 bucks a month, though, to stay here for an extra year. Sure. Uh, which is kind of like, you know, our contract does say that uh, you have to give, I think it was 60 days notice before raising any rent. That he's like, well, I mean, I could always just give you 60 days notice to move out. So take it or leave it. <laughs> you know, I obviously took it and sure. uh, paid more. But, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're thinking of of waiting because of the size of the house we want stuff like that um it puts us in montgomery county pennsylvania it would put us more in the jumbo loan status instead sure. of things that would be in the fha or things like that yeah because uh, it's over 550 um I think that's a, a smarter move or you think it's you think it's smarter for us to hold off wait in the market in the future or is now the time for somebody like us to buy i'm sure there's a lot of a lot of families out there a lot of listeners like us feel the same way i mean what what, what would be your professional opinion someone in a similar situation to us i think that there is a lack of uh, listen there's a lack of labor there's a lack of building materials the prices are going to continue to go up there is a lot of investment from hedge funds that are buying up a lot of properties. What is it? BlackRock, Blackstone, one of those two companies have been buying up houses. Yeah. All of them, all of them are buying up. I mean, if you look at how many, and they're buying it over retail prices, they're setting their own uh, values on these properties because they can buy them cash. It's not like they have to get appraised. Remember, I mean, the... The market doesn't determine the price. A ready, willing, and able buyer determines the price. So right now, what you're dealing with is a lot of competition with demand. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of people, you're 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 right in that sweet spot where those people that are uh, that were born between what is it, uh, 89 and 93, are now getting into that late 20s, early 30s, and they're starting to be first time home buyers. Right. So you're running with that millennial rush that's going into the first time. So everything's getting pushed up, plus lack of inventory, plus right when they start getting cooking on this, David, COVID hits. Right when the building starts getting going, COVID hits and really starts putting brakes on it. So it's a supply and demand issue right now. So it just depends on where you're at and what you want to do. And if you want to take advantage of getting the appreciation and getting, you know, obviously the tax benefits of, uh, of buying your own property. So if you're in that position, then go for it. I mean, they, they say, what's the best time to plant a tree 20 years ago? It's the same thing with real estate, right? When's the best time to buy real estate 20 years ago? You know what I mean? So um, you know, it, it depends on if you're buying this house, if you want to buy this house just for a few years, I'd probably hold off. If you want to buy a house for the next seven to 10, great time. Probably seven to 10. I mean, that that's what we would probably be looking at until kids are at college, stuff like that. Um, people, yeah, people so have been that, telling that, me since two, advice. people have been telling me since 2012, it's a bubble. It's going to burst. There's no way everything's coming out. It's going too fast. Blah, you know, all the, these houses are selling too much. It's going too hot since 2012 for the last 10 years. I've been hearing the same thing. Imagine if you would have bought a house two years ago before COVID three years ago, you would in your market, it's probably gone up 20, 30%. Right. If we would have bought it beforehand, I probably would not be in the Jebel loan status. So, I mean, that that's the, you know, and instead of looking at 10 to 15% down payment, what, what is that like 3%? I think the difference is uh, with the values. So that's where it's kind of throwing us off. So the last topic I want to get into is you also are a fellow YouTuber and podcaster with your show, uh, what is it? Wholesaling Inc., right? Wholesaling Inc., uh, and then on my on my YouTube channel. Yeah, it's just Brent Daniels on YouTube. We, uh, I coach and teach and, and, and do what you do, right? Try to provide as much value to the community that's interested in uh, learning how to be a real estate entrepreneur, a real estate investor. 
And um, yeah, we just come with a lot of energy. I mean, it's, I'm sure you've had the same advice, David, where, you know, be yourself uh, and people either turn you up or they turn you off. And uh, we've been fortunate that uh, almost 60,000 people have subscribed and, and join us for a lot of the live question and answers that we do every week. And uh, it's just a phenomenal, phenomenal opportunity to, to communicate uh, to people that are really excited and have a ton of energy uh, behind um, wholesaling real estate, flipping real estate, and building their portfolio. Yeah, the, I mean, the real estate market, the real estate professionals. I know a lot of real estate agents that are all good friends of mine, but that's a very tight-knit, passionate group. I mean, especially in an area, it's weird because they're competitors, but yet still friends. You know, it's 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 weird. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's it's pretty cool. Well, best of success with you with your your YouTube channel, your live streams, your podcast, all that stuff. Um, I know we talked about a lot of topics, a lot of different companies, all that stuff. So one last time, do me a favor. If you could, please list out all the places that our listeners, our viewers on YouTube can find you at. And we'll also list it down in the description below. I love it. So the main podcast is Wholesaling Inc., I-N-C. Wholesaling Inc. and then the Brent Daniels YouTube channel. And then from there, you'll, I mean, it's a, it, there's a ton of opportunities for us to interact. That's where you go down the rabbit hole. That's where you go. That's where I get you. No. <laughs> <laughs> perfect. Perfect. Awesome, Brett. Hey, this has been awesome. This has been informative. Uh, you know, I've got to admit, whenever I hear wholesaler, I never really think of housing. You know, I hear wholesaler. I think maybe just because I'm in business process automation, but I'm thinking like retailer, like you're distributing goods and stuff like that. I don't think of the housing thing and maybe that's on me, but do you find that in general? Yeah, it's, it's really, you know, it, there's so many different definitions in our business and it's not really the same as like, Oh, we're going to buy a huge amount of inventory and sell it. You know what I mean? It's uh, basically we wholesaling and real estate basically means we source discounted property. That's what it is. Yeah. And so when yeah. you when you learn as a real estate entrepreneur that finding the deals is the magic, mm -hmm. is the whole thing, finding those right. opportunities, you could do whatever you want. You could keep them, you could flip them, or you could sell them to your buddies. So it's it's just a phenomenal, phenomenal business. That's awesome. It sounds like you definitely have created the network around you to be able to achieve all three of those things. So, yeah. hey, thank you. Mr. TTP, Brett, I appreciate you coming <laughs> on to the show. Becoming shark bait, See, you, you survived. And uh, definitely, you know, if the housing market crashes, I'm going to bring you back on you to better. see how things are going. You <laughs> better. That's right. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Cheers. Hey, David. Wow. That was such an incredible chat with Brett, right? First, you all know the routine. If you found this interview helpful, if it sparked those warm and fuzzies, please do me a favor, hit that like button, smash that subscribe button. But if you really want to help us out because you know Shark Bite Fizz is the greatest kept secret out there in the world, the small business, please share us out to your network, your friends, your colleague, your family, anywhere you dwell on the interwebs, whether it's Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Minds, any place out there, get the word out. I would love to see nothing more than Brent Daniels and Shark Bite Biz out there trending. Now let's get back to our rock star guest, Brent. With all the digital transformation that has gone on during these past few years with COVID, it's finally time to start getting that personal connection back. TPP, as Brent calls it, or talk to people, is something I really view as critical as the next step in business evolution of where we're at right now in 2022. So many times I find myself telling my team, heck, even sometimes reminding myself, just pick up the dang phone, dial the number, make the connection. Things are so easily taken out of context and really can get out of whack pretty quick. In a text message, whether it's, uh, you know, text, email, a post or whatever. Whereas when you chat with somebody, you can make that direct connection instead of going around in the circle 
of thinking they mean this with that context, but actually they mean this with that context. You know what I mean? It's just so much simple, so much more direct. Just pick up the phone and talk to people. Why are people so afraid of talking to other people in 2022? It is insane. Are we that insulated because of what COVID has done to our brains that reprogrammed us from wanting to talk to people to be in inside like, no, nope, I can't make this call. That's too crazy. You know, that's just really, I don't know. It's just weird. I, I, I don't get it, but, you know, I'm guilty of this too. I'll admit it. You know, there's points where I dread making a phone call. Now, usually it's because I know I'm going to get yelled at. But I also know that once I, after I get yelled at, I'm going to be able to resolve the problem. Whereas if I go through email, it's going to drag on for weeks or months and we're going to really upset each other. So, you know, to Brett's point, I think this is something that is being missed in marketing today. That personal connection by cold calling and mastering building the personal relationship in a non-corny, non-corny way, because I hate it. Oh, Mr. Strasser, I see you like the Philadelphia Eagles. You know, I like the Philadelphia Don't do that. That is the worst thing uh, ever. Find a better way to get into the door. At least that's just my take. Anyways, awesome stuff, Brent. Really love the story. Love the advice. Thanks for coming on and best of luck with TPP. And thank you so much for telling us all about your program. Question of the day, dialing for dollars. Love it. Hate it. Leave a comment down below. Would love to hear your opinion on it. Do you want to be on the show? Shoot out an email, interviews at sharkbitebiz.com. We are pretty full for this year, but as I've been mentioning, we are going to eventually kick off a live stream. It's been a little bit delayed. As I, you all know, I've had COVID and, you know, moved and traveling. It's been very busy the past month for me, but we are going to be kicking off a live stream and we do want to get a queue of guests lined up. Uh, which we're doing pretty pretty good on, I must add myself. Also, please, if you're watching on YouTube, hit the join button. It's only $3 a month. You could become a baby shark and directly support this channel or head on over to deadhousecoffee.com where you can get the freshest coffee known on earth. It is roasted, sealed, and shipped within a 24-hour period right to your doorstep. So please, deadhousecoffee.com, use code SHARK. You'll save 20% and we'll get the proceeds to continue growing, the, growing this show. You all know this by now, but I'll tell you again. I'm David Strasser. This is Shark Bite Biz. We'll see you all next episode. Cheers. Thank you for listening to Shark Bite Biz. We hope you got some insightful info from this podcast. Be sure to subscribe to us through your favorite podcast app and visit us on the web at www.sharkbitebiz.com. How has business changed for you in the 20s? Email us at podcast at sharkbitebiz.com so you can join us and share your story.